Let us in love it by Peter Chapel. Act one, scene one. Elizabethan music sounds, lugubrious and mournful. The curtain rises on the grand hall of Fustian House, a gloomy 16th century hall hung with indistinct portraits of the Fustian family and dim copies of a coat of arms above them. The main feature is an imposing Tudor staircase of oak. A scarlet robe is stretched across the bottom, denying access to the public. It is a damp, freezing day, and the house is unheated. As the music groans with melancholy, a small group of miserable tourists is led in by, is led in by their guide, Miss Lettuce Dufet. Uh, you are looking 
uh, in fact, if a unique monument of English history. Yes, indeed, <laughs> and one of the most romantic. It is known as the Staircase of Advancement. <laughs> now, does anyone know why it is so called? Oh. Well, I will tell you. <laughs> On that day of Candlemas, which, by the way, has nothing to do with Christmas, so some of you might think, uh, but falls on the second day of February. John Fustian gave a great feast in this hall to honor Queen Elizabeth. We do not know what he served at his banquet, but no doubt it contained some hedgehogs. He <laughs> <laughs> certainly, hedgehogs were a considerable delicacy in those days. They were known as virgins and would have been endorsed. Uh, do you know what that would mean, endowed? Yeah, yeah. Well, made gold, glazed with egg yolk, an exquisite word, do you not think? And, I mean, they were imaginative, our, our ancestors, and what they ate. Uh, uh, their food is a particular enthusiasm of mine. Uh, did you know that they ate puffins? Yes. Uh, well, they classified them as fish. So they, they would eat them on fast days of the church. Clever, you see. <laughs> and the same with Coney. Similarly classified. You, do you know what Coney's are? Afraid I don't. Pine cones, perhaps? Oh, no, no, no. Much, much juicier. Mm. <laughs> Infant rabbit torn from its mother's breast. <laughs> <laughs> my story. Her Majesty arrived for John Fustian's feast, emerging from the bedchamber at the head of the stairs. She was wearing a dazzling dress with a hem onto which had been sewn 100 pearls dredged from the Indian Ocean, <laughs> sent as a present from an Ottomite sultan. Alas, so heavy was this hem that she tripped on the first step and would have fallen the whole way down had not her host, who was standing in the middle of the staircase on the seventh stair from the top. I can't see it. Had he not rushed up and caught her in the very nick of time, well, for this service, the queen immediately called for a sword and dumped him her knight. She then tore off six of the largest pearls <laughs> from her treacherous hem and made him set them in the handle of the sword which she had just ennobled him with. <laughs> oh, you would have seen that sword in this very room, couched on a bed of crimson velvet. <laughs> Unfortunately, it was stolen last week. <laughs> Interesting story, is it not? <laughs> well, that concludes the tour of Hustian House. I, I do wish you a very grand afternoon. Thank you. Lights up. It is some days later. <laughs> <laughs> at what is indisputably the most famous staircase in the world. <laughs> <laughs> the staircase of aggrandizement. On the night of February 2nd, 1585, a brilliant snowy night. <laughs> John Fustian made before his sovereign here in this hall a monumental feast. The tables were piled high with hedgehogs and puffins <laughs> and conies. <laughs> Hundreds of the liveliest courtiers stood salivating to consume. <laughs> and suddenly she appeared, glorious herself, the Virgin Queen of England in a blaze of perfect diamonds, <laughs> presented to her by the Tsar Ivan the Terrible. <laughs> a portrait of her in miniature and lost a little of his icy heart. <laughs> and her chaste looks, smiling, she set foot upon the first stair there. Alas, as she did so, at that precise moment, she slipped and would have plunged head 
long down all 15 polished bruising steps have not to a person standing precisely where I stand now. <laughs> At the very bottom, lent in a single bound. <laughs> powerless gesture, eyes wide with terror in the flare of torches. And then suddenly, John Fustian moves. He who up to that moment had lived his whole life as a dull and turgid human, <laughs> makes the spell, springs forward and upward, rises like a bird, like feathered mercury, soars in one astounding leap like a bird. Up to and at the last moment catches her in his loyal arms, rises her high above his head, <laughs> rosy cheeked with, with triumph, cries up to her, adored majesty, adored and endured majesty. Lord, you are safe and your hedgehogs await. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes. Could you give me your reference for that story? <laughs> but my what? Reference. <laughs> I'm by way of being an Elizabethan scholar. The doings of the Virgin Queen constitute my hobby. I have nowhere read that John Fustian performed such a feat, let alone lifted her on high or spoke those words. But it is true, nevertheless. <laughs> I don't see how it can be. Well, what do you say? For one thing, no one in the world could meet these stairs in a single bound. And a loop for Catholic couldn't do it. I ask you again for your reference. Excuse me, but I, I mean, there is hostility in, in, in your tone. <laughs> in, in your voice, which implies that I, what I am saying uh, is lacking in veracity. It's lacking in possibility, that's what it's lacking in. <laughs> Well, I mean, you, you, as an Elizabethan, Elizabethan scholar, know there is sometimes a certain enthusiastic exaggeration in the country prose of the 16th century, uh, but the heroism of the act, I mean, the sheer exuberance, the romance of it, leaps from the page of the chronicle, I quote, as dazzling as John Fustian himself. Yes, but what is it? That's what I'm asking. Yes. What is it, please? Yeah, what is what? The chronicle you quote. Uh, uh, the, 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 the chronicle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, I mean, there must be a very chronicle. And where might I find that? Uh, Nate. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> because it is not published. <laughs> it lies hidden in a private archive, safe uh, from the eyes of those who would use it for aggressive and uncharitable sources. <laughs> 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 is now <laughs> Yes, please, uh, take that as your way out. As you go, you may observe that there is a saucer on the maple wood table by the door. It is from the very first period of the Wedgewood factory, hence its delicate shade, shade and, and appear and, and shape and so on. It is its purpose is for the collection of uh, such bourgeois uh, as you may care to leave. Uh, if, as I suspect, uh, some of you lack the French tongue, uh, I, I translate the to word as tips. <laughs> Tokens of appreciation. <laughs> <laughs> the surly man marches off crossly. The others thank Lettuce effusively. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The lights fade. 